Mr. M.S. Unnikrishnan is with us. He's Managing Director at uh, Thermax. Mr. Unnikrishnan, it's a pleasure, sir. Good morning. Good to have you with us here. Thanks very much. Uh, so, I, I was saying, we spoke to you on the 8th of October. You were saying, you told me that there have been no single large core sector projects which have been concluded. Hence, larger orders are very, very difficult to come by. Smaller sized projects in food processing, pharma, textiles, light engineering, well, they are getting done, but they are small, 100 five to 500 shows in size. Uh, and now we've got the numbers for the second quarter from Thermax. They, they bear that commentary out. It's been a pretty tough quarter, especially on the order inflow side. Yes, Prashant. Are you able to hear me? Absolutely, sir. Clearly. Go ahead. Well, it had been a very tough quarter uh, vis-a-vis -vis the fresh order intake. Nothing new because I had already predicted that uh, larger project orders are very few in the market and nothing is going to be getting concluded and uh, it came out to be true. There were not a single cement or a steel plant order got concluded in the entire of the country, <clears throat> nor did we have the uh, good luck of having any of them in the international market. So we had to be dependent upon the small ticket size orders, which are the normal base order intake of Thermax. In that we've done quite well because 810 crores uh, to be booked from uh, the domestic plus international market was not an easy task. Uh, I would say that uh, considering the current market position, we've been very aggressive in the market and picked up so much of orders. Uh, there are visibilities of a couple of projects in the international and uh, one or two in the domestic market. Uh, let's wait for them to be getting concluded because quarter over quarter for larger project may not be the right thing to look at it. But certainly there is no reduction in the base orders, which is from the sector which I mentioned about food, food processing, uh, pharma, beverages. Uh, for a change, we have also seen orders coming from the tire sector, which is uh, something like an auto ancillary, you can take it. So certainly there are movements in some of the sectors, some more sectors have started ordering out. But the larger sectors are still numb at this point of time. That's about the order intake. Now, coming to the results, uh, well, expected because when you open the year with the lower carry forward orders, naturally you will have a lower income. But uh, if I were to look at cumulatively for the H1, first half of the year, we are still 4% uh, on revenues in comparison to the previous year. And the net profits are at the same level as last year. So there is nothing that is a depletion has happened as of now. We have half year more available to work towards possibly maintaining like last year's balance sheet. And let's work towards that. Mm. Sir, uh, two points, right? Standalone order, or standalone order inflow has been uh, less than a thousand crores for, I think this is the third quarter in a row. And uh, order book consolidated, the stock of orders has declined by 15%, right? This is the sixth straight quarterly decline. Uh, so are we are we essentially looking at improvement change in both these things only say sometime in the second half of financial year 17 mr only krishnan uh improvement could be there in any quarter if i were to be having uh, revenue recognition lower than the order intake now the revenue recognition is uh, 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 remaining at above 1000 crores a quarter for the standalone and maybe 1200 for the group numbers uh, whereas order booking, as you mentioned, had been less than a thousand for the last two quarters. I am not uh, writing of the coming quarter uh, that it is going to be at uh, the same level as uh, the current uh, quarter or the previous quarter. There is a likelihood that I can uh, possibly book more orders than uh, what we will be revenue recognizing the next quarter, which could possibly mean, possibly, and I am, see, these are all predictive at this point of time, speculative predictions, because we have couple of at least projects on uh, negotiation platform right now. I can't reveal the names nor the numbers. If any one of them were to get concluded, in the current circumstances to predict that somebody is going to finalize order immediately is uh, not the right thing from, from my side to do it also. So your question is about, yes, there had been a decline in carry forward orders of the order book and the tend to, uh, that, that trend to be reversed. Thing. We are going to see the larger project uh, order finalization happen in the country, which uh, you're right. I don't think anything is going to substantially change in the current year. We'll have to wait for the next year. Is, is, there, is there a way around it in terms of uh, low, uh, being a low-cost bidder, things like that? I mean, is that something you'd consider doing? 
or it's not about that. It's just uh, that there's no real large work getting concluded, so there's no question of uh, uh, bids there getting done. Any, there aren't any. I mean, yeah. let's say that uh, a couple of hundred crore uh, size of orders can come from uh, cement industry, steel industry, oil and gas, fertilizer, power industry. These are the five sectors which normally would give you. Or maybe non-forest metallurgy also could be possible, four or five sectors. Nothing is happening in any of the sectors. I mean, I haven't seen anybody uh, uh, in the steel industry coming and telling, well, let's conclude a project for expansion capacity. Nor, nor am I expecting anything to be happening immediately. So one has to be honest about it. And uh, in the international market, there are few inquiries prevailing. But th there are tough uh, fights, which, of course, uh, Thermax kind of a company has got a fairly good market recognition, brand value, and uh, uh, past experience of having executed fairly good projects on time within cost abroad. So certainly, if there is anything like that also getting concluded, we'll be one of the major uh, global players recognized to be accepting captive power orders anywhere in the world, at least in the developing world. But there again, there are pressures in the Middle East, there are pressures in the African continent. Even Southeast Asia is not the way it used to be maybe a six months back. So there is overall pressure for capacity building anywhere in the world. So one cannot have a predictability right now that things can turn around very quickly. So, uh, EBITDA margins were down 90 basis points on a year-on-year -year basis. Yeah. Uh, could you could you talk about that? Is that exactly. also a function of? Yeah. Yeah. Last year in the uh, second quarter, we had 23 and a half crores other income, which is from the treasury of the company. Uh, in the current year, it is down by almost uh, 10 and a half crores. So the single uh, factor between last year and current year in terms of reduction in profitability is the treasury earnings. And with the reduced interest rates and the FMPs not being available with the change made by the government, uh, making them short term and unnecessarily making us pay for it, maybe there is a gap of 11 crores earnings in the current quarter in comparison to previous year's same quarter on the other income. Otherwise, operations are as efficient as what it used to be last year and it will only improve going forward because we are very particular about the way we run our company. All right, fair enough. Uh, you know, the we've got some uh, good news. I don't know how I, I want you to react to it. India jumping up uh, many notches as far as the ease of doing business report is concerned. I'm sure you've uh, uh, you, you, you've read it in newspapers, etc. This morning. Yeah. How how does that sort of kind of correlate? How do you see it essentially? Because what you're seeing right now is not uh, is, is is lack of activity, right? Uh, core sector activity. But then you've got this improvement and ease of doing business. I need to admit that uh, there are certain states of this country who are taking active interest in inviting industrialists from within the country and from abroad to come and to are willing to do a hand holding. So with that, certainly, I mean, when the government comes forward to uh, accelerate investment and invite people to come and set up capacity, ease of doing business should improve, at least in setting up of companies. Doing business is not setting up a factory or a company. It is also running it there afterwards. In running it there afterwards, uh, I don't think anybody is given uh, credence for it beyond a level. The grassroots level changes needed at maybe the factory inspectorate to maybe a health inspector to an excise inspector to an income tax inspector, I didn't say commissioner. Uh, at the operating levels, I have not seen any change happening in the entire of the country. We are operating in a couple of states and I don't think uh, grassroots level changes are happened. So as far as investment, invitation and helping companies to set up uh, like acquiring land to getting your licenses to start the company, I think there is a concentration focus at the mantrale and maybe the secretariat levels, which has uh, made this number improve. But what one should be also working simultaneously is to ensure that the companies who are running and those who will be running in the future are also supported the same way, the way you are inviting people to come. So, so your sense is that the ranking going up uh, is essentially the, uh, the, the hurdles being cleared for attracting new investment in, right? Absolutely right. Uh, that is what this is reflective of and not easing of conditions on the ground for existing running businesses. Absolutely right. The labor laws in the country have not been changed. 
the not that the government didn't want to change there is no consensus and there is a lot of pressure by the organized unions which are represented also by virtually every political party so they have a vested interest in each one of them they have not been able to make any change related to that even today in case if you got to be uh, you know facing a situation of lower order intake order position and the market demand will to come down you don't have a choice but to be carrying the fixed expenses of the uh, blue collar if the white collar can be dispensed with but the blue collar can't be that is not the case in uh, when you talk about uh, you know ease of doing business mirana company in denmark where uh, there had been occasions where uh, we had difficulties of uh, you know for a particular couple of quarters we could always lay the labor off and it reinvite them when we had orders available we can't even dream of doing su- such kind of a thing in the country so what do people do they give very limited permanent employment and uh, employ contract labor so it's actually a counterproductive uh, prashant so if we are going to be ensuring larger companies to give better jobs for uh, the population of the country you got to have a freedom given to them and can't make that as a burden on them that's one case i mentioned about similarly the laws in the country are very archaic you now i'll i'll give an example sorry taking a minute on that imagine a worker in a factory were to have a cut on his finger and didn't come for work for the next day it has to be reported as a lost time injury to the uh, local office of the labor labor office and as per the law they are going to prosecute the managing director of the company for a finger of somebody being cut small uh, insertion and it must be a mistake done by him but in this country you will uh, prosecute a managing director for that is that is of doing business i don't believe in all of that i mean you need to have uh, this law would have been necessary maybe 100 years back not in 2015 or 2016 i don't say that the, there should not be charging but there should be charging maybe somebody who is responsible for it this is the a lot, lot needs to be done uh, prashant on a lot more accounts and the quantum of uh, you know excise sales tax and income tax notices what all of us get honest companies also do get it they don't have a gradation for it uh, self attestation self clearances are it to be coming in but have, i i i would say that the current government is at least seized upon and i'm sure working together with them we should be able to improve it going forward absolutely absolutely yeah uh thanks very much mr unikrishnan